Let's move on though. And just to say, I've tried to really convey this point, but for me, one of the most impressive achievements of your two recent books is how clearly they demonstrate a contemporary form of psychoanalysis. One which innovates, which searches, which explores, which reconceptualizes rather than simply reaffirming older historical concepts, as if these concepts were somehow immune from historical change. And I have a huge amount of respect for this just because, you know, for me, I'm, I suppose, primarily a teacher of, of Lacanian theory. And it becomes all too easy, I think, in, in a scholarly domain to, to spend so much time trying to get it right of what Lacan said in 1954. Um, and of course, there's good reason to do that. But as I think the whole premise of, of 21st century psychoanalysis makes clear, that unless we're going to constantly be involved in the project of reformulating, thinking again, reconceptualizing, adding to um, what psychoanalysis has done, can do, is going to do, it, it's not going to be a vital form of practice. So you offer the hugely helpful note, um, namely the idea that we need to place our work in the context of the history of psychoanalysis and the way it works, but also that we need to bear in mind that the unconscious is a form of the discourse of the moment. So could you say a little bit more about that and, and about your suggestion that it is imperative to take into account the manner in which we construct our cases today? I am so happy, Derek, that you asked this question because I, I, for me, this is absolutely vital uh, as a psychoanalyst. Um, I, you know, for me, it's what I'm interested in is how I might use the work of uh, Freud or uh, Lacan or Jacqueline Miller, or any, any other analyst, uh, that in a way that helps me as an analyst in my work with the, the analysis and who I see. So I'm, uh, to, to, to kind of take up the, your question in a way, I'm less interested in a sort of deciphering precisely what, you know, what did Lacan exactly mean in this text and so forth, uh, but rather in finding uh, things in Lacan's work, and it's not necessarily all in the, the late Lacan, uh, that uh, things that are useful uh, in uh, conducting a case uh, today. Uh, it's, it's a way of, of thinking of, of Lacan, and this could be true for any psychoanalyst whose work we read, Freud and so forth, uh, from the perspective not of what does that mean, but how might I use it? Um, the, uh, this not to say that there's not a lot of serious study that goes into sort of trying to figure out how you're gonna use it too. So um, the, the other point that I think is even more important is you, know, you, you, you uh, the issue of the relationship of the speaking being and the outside world. You, know, you brought up a little bit ago the footnote in the interpretation of the dreams where Freud asks, you know, whose wish? I mean, that's a very Lacanian question, of course, because for Lacan, the desire is always the desire of the other. And I think w one of the things that is most important to me about Lacan's interest in topology is the idea that you know, it, we need to break down the notion that um, I as a, a, as a subject or speaking being am this entity, and then there's this world out there, you know, which is a very typical way that um, people sort of naturally think of themselves in the world. I think for Lacan, and, and this is true to a certain extent for Freud as well, but this is something Lacan really highlighted. You know, the, the unconscious is sort of in us in a way, but it's also out there. You know, there, the, there's a continuity between sort of the, the outer world as I've experienced it and something that is, you know, the most intimate to me in my unconscious and, in, you, know, you know, deep in my mind to use this kind of geological metaphor. And that the, the, the barrier between inside and outside isn't as clear as we might think. So what that means is, you know, my unconscious is, 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 a, is, a, is, is very closely connected to the world around me. And the world changes. 
you know, the world, the, the way language use changes, the, 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 uh, one of the fundamental Lacanian notions uh, with regard to this change has been a sort of decline in the importance of the name of the father that has occurred, say, over the last century that has enormous impact. Um, the, you know, the work that's done in the Lacanian world now around autism, you know, reflects this. The work that's been done in the Lacanian world since 1988 around ordinary psychosis and rethinking um, the place of psychosis in the world today is, is, a, is a feature of that. The, this idea of a new clinic of hysteria or a new clinic of the obsessional neurosis speaks to those changes. And if we don't uh, um, develop a kind of approach in our practice that takes into account the fact uh, that uh, a um, uh, that the, 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 that the changes of the world, let's just say, or the social and cultural changes have impact on the psyche or subjective experience uh, and continue to practice as if, say, we we're in Freud's moment, our practice will not be effective. You know, we will not be able to, 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 to help anybody. You know, the, 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 you know, to use a kind of very old fashioned language from psychiatry, you know, psychopathology sort of has changed. The ways in which people suffer and experience their suffering have, has changed dramatically from, from, from the past. And then we have to evolve our responses differently. So when I talk about constructing a case, you know, as an analyst, you try to think, and it gets to one of the, you know, the, something we've sort of talked about a little bit in some of the earlier questions and responses, you know, how will an annual analyst develop a formulation of a case? You know, what pieces are going to be pulled out? What's going to be highlighted in, 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 in how to put the case together? That, that, that um, act of constructing a case uh, is needs to be thought of within the context of each case. And then there is a historical quality to that. You raised the very important question just a few minutes ago of who's doing the constructing. I mean, is it the analyst or is it the analysand? I mean, because ultimately it, it needs to be in some ways the analysand who, who is able to do the act of construction, which you, you alluded to with regard to Suzanne O'Mell in the dream. Um, you know, I think, um, uh, I, I think all of this speaks to the fact that, you know, we have to be querying our, the world today, taking into account what's happening uh, socially and culturally to be able to, to respond. And that's not to say that uh, there are not going to be situations where uh, we, we come into contact with uh, folks who uh, who's uh, sort of suffering seems to be structured in a kind of more uh, old fashioned way, you know, which, and that happens. I mean, that's a, it's a function of uh, practice. So, uh, but uh, it, 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 it's true that I think um, this is important. And, and I would just add as one final response to the question, my interest in the late Lacan is, is largely a function of the fact that I think the work he did at the end of his life uh, really is critical for today's clinic. You know, the, 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 all these formulations around the late Lacan, I find are particularly valuable in, in, in working with people today, which is why I felt a desire to kind of, you know, to focus on this for a while. Yeah. It's, a, it's a very timely reminder that upon reflection, it's, it's obvious, but that the unconscious is part of, or is fundamentally part of the symbolic domain which is constantly changing um so as opposed to any you know naive dreams of a kind of static mode of theorization 
that just cannot really occur in any meaningful way in psychoanalysis. Um, once we've made that point that, that the unconscious is not at all cut off from the historical flux of how signifiers, so on and so forth, are being utilized. So it's a really, it's a really useful reminder, but it's also um, a slightly, it, it brings in almost, for me at least, a kind of note of despair because, you know, you're like, oh man, I mean, I read all those books, there's Freud on the shelf, I read that stuff, I got it down. Now are you telling me I got to keep on changing? Anyway, so I'm obviously acting out a little bit, but it, it's, 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 in a way, it's it's both a salutary but but inspiring sense that psychoanalysis continues to transform, to change, to develop, and indeed it must do. And in fact, if you look at Freud and Lacan themselves, they're constantly aware of the need to do just that. So um, you know, maybe maybe it's just the the question of being in a more academic context where people forget that. But it it is not a final discourse. There's the full stops to say this is how sexuation works and always will. That's not the point, right? You've got to keep on thinking about what variations. And I mean, we're living in, in a time where these um, many contentious issues, reconstructions, reformulations, and maybe just to end my, my little mini rant here, but is also to say that, that the unconscious is historical. So is psychopathology. It, you know, um, and and like we don't have to enter into a whole you know uh, litany of complaints about the DS, DSM or anything, but you know those ideas that somehow now you've got um, a fairly crystallized outline of what a certain pathology might look like, off obviously need to be uh, interrogated and 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 borne in mind with the fact that by the time that thing hits print, psychopathology, so to speak, is itself being transformed and changing and adapting and moving forward. Anyway, sorry, I just wanted to underline the point that you'd made.